guys, welcome to our van tour. We are family from Oaxaca, Mexico, and we've driven about 25,000 kilometers to get here. So we chose a 2006 Mercedes Sprinter because they were the vehicle I drove as an ambulance back at home, so I knew they were really good, I knew they were reliable, they were really economic, and one of the biggest things is, is me and Lee are both big humans. I'm six foot one, Lee's, five ten. Lee's five ten, and we needed something we were going to be able to stand up straight in, and it makes all the difference, especially when you're cooking and moving around the van. Welcome to our open air kitchen area. This is where we do most of our cooking. We normally fold this table down. Uh, this gives us access to the propane at the back. As you'll see later, we can also get access to the propane in the, up on the kitchen counter. Inside this cupboard, we have a five pound propane tank. It's sealed in an airtight container and it's vented through to the bottom. Five pound, is, it's a tiny little tank. The Mexicans laugh at us when we get it filled, mm. but it actually is really good. It lasts us about a month with cooking two or three meals a day. As for water, we have a 40 litre tank under the sink here. That feeds our dish water. Mm -hmm. And then we also have 25 litres of purified water in our kitchen pantry. On top of that, we keep another 20 litres under the couch, just as a backup in case we run out. To fill our water, we have this little tap nozzle here. It's been awesome in terms of you can use any garden hose. So we decided to go with the industrial style faucet to match the galvanised tub sink. It's great because it swivels around, it's really good for washing dishes. The sink itself is awesome, we get a lot of comments on it. It was actually Lee's Pinterest dream that we managed to turn into reality and it's been unreal. It's got plenty of space for dishes but it's also good for laundry or even potentially for washing Lee's hair. Or your curly long locks. Or my hair. So we decided to go with an electric pump. Initially we were going to get a manual pump because it was cheaper but after doing some YouTubing, I found it wasn't that hard to install. It runs off of a Flowjet pump. So we'll bring you over to our overhead cupboards here. We keep all of our doors open on these gas struts. Not only do they keep the doors open while we're using them, but they help keep them closed over all the bumpy roads that we've gone through. In the first one here, we have our basic necessities like toothbrushes, coconut oil, chalk for a chalkboard. In the second one here, we keep all of our spices and vitamins. Most importantly, Max's Vegemite. We're running low there, so we'll need another dose soon. And then on this side, we just have fruits, vegetables, and extra cutlery. We'll bring you into the kitchen cabinets now. So on the top shelf, we have our cooker, bowls, and cups. On the middle, we have our pots and pans, utensils, and dry food. And on the bottom, it's more of our miscellaneous, Aki's dog food, red wine, almond milk, all the goodies. So one of my biggest concerns when we first started designing the layout of our van was to have enough storage. I like to be neat and tidy and I want a place for everything to go and when you have a small space I think that's super important. Alright, so up top we have more dry foods and canned goods. On the second shelf we have a purified drinking water. The third is very important, it's Max's coffee supplies which I fought against at the beginning thinking it took up too much space but we have loved it and it's proven to be very social. Down here is more dry food storage and the bottom tote is all miscellaneous as well. So for our cladding, we use thin pine tongue and groove. We love the way it turned out in the van. We decided to clad the doors to really give it a finished off look inside. And we also chose to do a whitewash for the paneling just to keep everything light and bright and airy. So these two boards are my boards from Australia. I brought them over with me and pretty much designed the van around them. Therefore I measured up this space to perfectly fit them 
They're just held in place by a couple of Oki straps. The second board at the back is a little bit too tall, so I had to notch out a bit of the cladding. But all in all, it works perfectly, it holds them in place, and they've survived six months, so they must be doing okay. So this base also serves to hold our tabletop. The bottom Oki strap holds it in place, but I'll let Lee talk more about the table, because that's her baby. So now we're gonna show you how our living room functions with the table in place. So we chose to put our bed in the middle of the van versus the back for a couple of reasons. One, which we touched on earlier, we love to cook outside as much as we can. The second is for our buddy over here, Aki. We wanted him to be able to have a comfortable seat while we were driving, knowing we were going to be doing tons of kilometers on this trip. We also like to have the L-shaped couch here for when you're sitting and you're reading, you get a beautiful view of the ocean out here. We definitely fight for this spot. And one of us can sit here, one can lie down. As for the actual mattress, we ordered it one of those box mattresses off Amazon. It's a six inches, it's four inches of foam and two inches of memory foam. And it is so comfortable. We did a lot of research to pick the mattress, which I think is extremely important when you live in a van. So one of the other reasons we chose to do an L-shaped couch in here was so that we can put our fridge underneath, which is a little bit of a unique setup compared to other people. So under here we have our 12 volt Dometic compressor. It draws very low power, it runs non-stop, and it holds 72 beer cans, which is one of the selling features that we want us on. So right down here we have our first dimmer switch. This dimmer controls the four LEDs that are on the ceiling. We put it here for two reasons. First is whenever we walk in the van, it's easy to turn on and step right in. Second, when we're in bed, it's also in reach while lying in bed to turn the lights on or off. So underneath our couch is also what we call our garage and our main storage. We keep all of our camping gear, all of our extra water, and other dry foods that we need to store. So this board was a late addition to our van. It was given to us by an absolute legend we met in San Diego. His girlfriend learned to surf on it before him, and when I told him Lee needed a board, he was more than happy to give us this one, which was unreal. It just so happened to fit perfectly in this space. We just use an eyelet screw and a hook to hold it on there. The nose actually rests within our headliner up here, which works out really well. So we decided to install this headliner for three reasons. First of all, and most importantly, it holds all of our bedding. That actually takes up a lot of space, so it's important. Secondly, it adds extra insulation for the van. I found behind the headliner there wasn't much insulation there, so having this here actually keeps a lot of heat out from the van. And thirdly, it also holds our blackout curtains. These are key for when you want to stealth camp in towns or cities. I can feel that body while we're video in 40 degree weather. In 40 degree heat. Okay, so we decided to go with the higher end Max Air fan. We don't regret it at all. We've met quite a few people traveling that have got cheaped out on their fan option and they've all complained about how loud theirs is or how much power it draws. This one draws not much power at all, but the best thing about it is it's got a rain guard so no water can come in when it's raining. You don't have to worry about it shot, uh, shutting. And as well, key for us because we're forgetful, you don't have to shut it when you drive. A lot of the other fans you do or else it could wreck the fan. This one, it's fine. We leave it up all the time. Perfect. So in terms of the electrical, this was actually the part of the conversion I found the hardest. I'm by no means a tradesman and I really struggled to figure out how to wire everything together. I ended up going with two 6 volt deep cycle flooded batteries. They're mounted underneath the van so we don't have to worry about them venting. There's two 100 watt solar panels on the roof that charge those. And I also run a 400 watt inverter that I use for smoothies and charging laptop, things like that. Okay, welcome to the cabin. As we were saying before, we kept this area pretty stealth for camping. 
One modification we did make to it is I built Oki's seat here. We did it for a few reasons. One, if anyone's been in a Sprinter before, you know the cup holders suck. This one, I built cup holders in nice and at our level. Secondly, storage. It's got, a, we put a fair bit of storage in there. We put a lot of our electronics in there, especially if we're going through military checkpoints or anything in Mexico. And finally, it's a spot for Oki to sit up front so he can be part of the party while we're driving forward. Oki, come here, bud. Here, bud. Oki. So when we are driving along, this is Oki's most standard seating position. Definitely the most comfortable seat in the house. But when he's not lying down and he wants to be more part of it, he comes up front. Oki, come here. Here, bud. Sit there. Oh. And this is Oki's other favourite spot. He loves it because he's in between both oh. And that's a wrap for Van Tour. Thank you for taking the time to watch us. We wanted to put this on YouTube because we learned how to build our van off YouTube and we wanted to give back to the community. If there's anything we forgot to add, feel free to put it in the comments below and we'll answer it for you. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and see you next time.